Throughout the past few years, a lot of the bigger and older YouTube titans have started to fall from their mountaintops. Matthew Santoro, for example, was a creator who took off pretty quickly, but started to slow down after Grade A Under A made a video against his content. He'd end up leaving YouTube a few years back, but returned just a month ago. The same thing happened with Guava Juice, another channel we covered, and just like Lanky Box, started to cater more towards a younger demographic, which helped his views increase for a short period of time, but as his fan base grew up and moved on to new interests, his channel struggled to generate the same amount of views for his content like he once received in the past. This leads us to another example of a channel which had it all, but with a slew of controversies that seemingly came out of nowhere, derailed his online presence to a point where he abandoned his channel and now posts stories onto another platform. That platform being Snapchat. Now obviously you know by the title that I'm speaking about David Dobrik, a YouTuber who created a channel with over 17.6 million subscribers as we speak, and was once compared to Jimmy Fallon. But there was a sudden and abrupt disappearance from his channel for a little over a year. Along with his main channel, he hasn't posted any podcast episodes with Jason Nash on his Views podcast channel. Honestly, the big reason why I even got the idea to make this video was because I constantly saw Jason Nash begging for money on TikTok Live every single day I went on the TikTok app. Today, we skip David's growth on YouTube and Vine and go straight to the controversies that led David Dobrik to leave his channel altogether. All of these controversies came out in the span of just a few years, and it seemed like all of the Vlog Squad members had their own opinion on David Dobrik and their experience with him. For the most part, they are all negative interactions with him, but that will be more later on when we speak about that. But with the table set for today's video, let's finally get into it. During the beginning of David's career, he'd hang around another content creator named Dom, who later got the moniker Dirty Dom for the wildly inappropriate side of his persona that would come to life during David's videos. I bring up Dirty Dom because of the allegations that were constantly being brought out against him, which had an all-time high during 2021. But it gets roped into everything else that happened that year, which led to David taking an extended break from YouTube. But back to the point. On a couple different occasions, Dom was exposed for being extremely inappropriate with the fans of David Dobrik, with his big catch being that he knew David, but this wasn't only with the fans, it was also with other creators as well. This started when a YouTuber named Ali Hardesty came out with a video titled Dirty Dom Exposed, My Story, in June of 2017 was probably a little bit weird now that I think about it, but it didn't alarm me at the time because the music was so loud, so I thought that was normal just so I would be able to hear him. He was hitting on me, telling me that I was really attractive and saying a bunch of stuff like that, asking to dance. He was saying things that were really off. I don't know if this was because he was just really drunk or if he was joking around, flirting, kidding. This was just one occasion where Dom was acting inappropriate towards a woman, but it wouldn't be the last. In 2018, David uploaded a video titled She Should Not Have Played With Fire. During this video, which is now deleted off of his channel, Dom would take two girls in his room for a threesome. But it turns out that there was a darker side to things. The video was quickly taken down by the request of the victim. And in 2021, the victim came out against Dirty Dom and David Dobrik and had an interview with Insider. The victim stated that she was R-worded by Dom because she was too intoxicated to consent to any sexual acts. Her and her friends were also supplied with alcohol when they were younger than the age of 21 years old. This was horrible and validated Ali Hardesty and her own experience with Dom, which was swept under the rug in 2017. This was pretty bad because not only did David allow this behavior, which shouldn't have been allowed to begin with, he also recorded it and posted the interaction between the victim and Dom on the internet for 5 million people to view before taking the video down. This showed that David was neglectful with the content he was producing and aided in his hiatus from the internet. But this also showed that David pressured everyone around him to do bad things for the sake of content. Now before the 2021 Insider interview with the alleged victim, David was already being called out a year prior for some of the distasteful comments he'd make in his oldest videos. One video in particular was one where he and his girlfriend Liza Koshi tried Japanese candy. Throughout this video, David would make some racist remarks while pronouncing Japanese items. Liza stated that it wasn't racist if she tells him no after every racist comment that he would say. No! It's not racist, that's like the sounds I hear when they talk. No, it's not racist as long as I keep saying no. Oh, okay, okay. We're doing this video first resurfaced on TikTok and called out David for how he mocked Asian accents. By this time though, David and Liza were already broken up. She'd post a lengthy apology onto Twitter, but before David was able to apologize, another old video would resurface on Twitter by Seth, where David allegedly said the N-word 
while wearing blackface, which just seemed like it was from a vine. Now, David took a different path for his apology and vocally apologized on this podcast called Views. This apology was pretty vague and pretty much glossed over the videos that resurfaced online, and he'd say that he was disappointed in the older videos that he made, but didn't speak about the video with Liza specifically, or the other video that Seth posted onto Twitter. I have made, I don't know, over six, 700 videos together. I've, I couldn't even tell you. And, um, and the intention with every single video is to make people laugh. And I know it sounds so cheesy and I hate saying it, I hate saying it, but every, every video I make, every Instagram I post, everything I do, I just want to cheer somebody up. I want to make them laugh. I want to make them smile. I want them to share it with a friend. And I, I just, I want them to have a positive experience when they're interacting with anything I produce. And with that being said, I feel like on a handful of occasions, I've just missed the mark on that. And that really, really bums me out. And that kind of sucks that it took me so long to understand. But I think when we went to our, our first Black Lives Matter protest and, and I, I was looking through my DMs afterwards, and it's one thing to get DMs from somebody going, hey, your video is so funny, or this is so funny, or, but it's a completely different thing to get DMs about how much, you mean, how much your alliance with the cause means for that person and their family, or how much it means... That, that you're using your voice to amplify theirs. Like that is a completely different feeling. But that's when I realized, holy shit, there's people that are, are seriously looking up to me for things more than just something goofy. You know, I think for a while I was kind of just like, I'm the goofball, that's all I am. But I think there's parts of this where, where I need to be more serious because I, I want to be a good role model for the people watching. And I'm ashamed and I'm embarrassed about some of the things I did in videos or in vines or whatever I was doing. And genuinely, I genuinely feel awful about it. And I'm going to do better actively and I'm, and I'm gonna do that consistently. And, and you know, you have my word for that. And I promise that. And if I'm anything, I'm a man of my word. Um, and I just wanna say that if there was a kid who saw something from me, that didn't make them feel welcomed or just made them feel uncomfortable. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I did not ever mean to make anybody feel out of place. I genuinely just want to make you have a good time. And I'm going to do that from here on out. And I'm going to do a better job at it. This wouldn't be the first time he'd use an alternative channel to apologize to his audience. We'd see the same pattern a few months later. Even with the racist comments which saw David being criticized, he'd still post to his channel like nothing happened. But in February of 2021, the tide started to shift for David and the perception of him as an individual and an online influencer. This was due to the ex-Vlog Squad members that came out against David and went on the H3 podcast to rehash their own experience with David during the time that they were in the videos with him. This all started with Trisha Paytas on an episode of Frenemies where she'd speak about her relationship with Jason Nash and David's weird obsession with trying to have Jason smash Tana Mojo, who at the time was around 18 years old old, and Jason at the time was almost 50 years old. Trisha also stated how there would be multiple occasions throughout her time within the vlog squad that David, before editing the vlogs down, would ask if she was okay with keeping a specific part in that they recorded, and sometimes it would be sexual because of what David would tell Jason to do, and Trisha would say that she didn't want it in the video, but David would ignore her and would keep it in the vlog anyways. Throughout this big expose on the Frenemies podcast, Trisha spoke about the numerous issues she had with David, how he'd be a tyrant over the other members, and how as soon as he didn't need Trisha anymore, he'd have Jason break up with her and she would be completely off of the videos. This one podcast sparked other ex-members to speak out against the abuse they endured during their time in the vlog squad and with David. The next person on the H3 podcast was Big Nick, who spoke about how the vlog squad was pretty much a big gossip circle. How everyone in that group would just talk about each other behind each other's back, but be nice to each other in their faces. He'd describe the group to a bullying high school scenario. Now, Nick felt like because of his situation, he'd help grow David and his brand, but David didn't help Nick's channel grow. Now, the same thing happened to Nick, like what happened with Trisha. Big Nick told David that he didn't like being the butt of the joke because of his dwarfism, and once David found that out, he pretty much told Big Nick that he no longer had a use for him in his vlogs. Big Nick stated that the constant jokes about his height were starting to make him feel depressed, and he'd also speak about how David once again enabled this toxic workplace behavior 
Twitter because it made the vlogs even better. And instead of ever telling the fans why Big Nick or any other member left the group, David instead left it up to the fans to speculate as to what happened and why members were leaving. And this would leave the fans in the dark as well and never explained what happened or why the members left. They just appear from the vlogs with no explanation. Of the story too that I was present for. Um, and yeah, like it, that's kind of a tricky thing because like I, I can feel her on the whole like, you know, feeling suicidal part. I mean, for a long time, like I felt like worthless being in those videos. Like I was like, dude, why am I even like here? Like what's the point of my existence? Because I was just treated like this, uh, like this uh, punching bag, right? Mm -hmm. Like everyone's just uh, joking about me, like mocking me. Then the fans in public are doing the same. And like, I had a good long look in the mirror and like, I was like, wow, I'm like really depressed. Like, and that was kind of my um, signal to be like, all right, dude. Like I, I realized right then and there, like followers, fame, money, none of this stuff is worth it. If I'm getting to the point where like, I don't even want to live, yeah, you know? And, like, and so I had like, and honestly, I'm kind of glad I went through that because it kind of broke in a way, like the way I viewed success, right? As a kid, I, I got big online and I just equated success with money, followers, fame. And then I got to the point where I'm like, look, I'm gaining all this stuff and I'm more depressed than I ever was before. This is now two different people who were involved in the vlog squad that collaborated the same exact story about David. How he enables horrible behavior within the group and then pressures the members to make jokes or behave badly in order to stay in the vlogs. If people go against David, then they are dismissed from the group and then they are replaced. A couple days later, Seth, who made regular appearances on David's channel, was interviewed by Ethan as well. Seth said that he wanted to come onto the podcast because he felt like Big Nick's experience with David was much like his own experience. Seth would be invited out to David's house to be in vlogs, but this also enabled David to pressure Seth to make culturally and sensitive jokes during the videos. Seth said that it's unspoken rule that you don't call out David on his BS because when people speak up, they disappear from the vlogs. Now this is a constant pattern for David and the same thing happened with Seth. When he told David his concerns with racist jokes, David invalidated Seth's concerns and a week later, Seth was replaced in the vlogs. Seth said that he felt exiled and just like how no one reached out to Trisha when she was in the mental hospital, the same thing happened with Seth. After he brought up his issue with David, he was thrown out to the wolves and his friends from the vlog squad stopped reaching out. Now, you may remember Seth from the vlogs where David played pranks on him, like when Seth thought he was going to kiss David's friend Karina Koff, but instead kissed Jason Nash. During the podcast, Seth said that he was basically essayed by Jason Nash, but this wouldn't be the only time that Jason and David would set this prank up against Seth. There would be a second time with Jason being in a gorilla suit. Like, that kissing video, the first one, Yeah, uh, that always struck me as so mean-spirited and messed up. So yeah. tell me about, first of all, that experience for you, how it played out and how you felt and the well, reaction and everything. And, and what was it? What, what was the video? Yeah, so it, it was a video where um, David set up with, uh, with Jason Nash and Corinna <laughs> and... Um, said that I was supposed to do a makeout scene with Corinna and um, had Jason get into, who had was gonna have Corinna in an old man mask while I was making out with her and then switched her out with Jason Nash. Right. So my experience and, and my perspective from the situation, I was literally like just getting off a flight, just got into town. I was like super exhausted from traveling. Mm. I go over to David's uh, apartment. Well, well, he calls me to come over. He's like, yo, can you come over? Like, I need you for a bit. And this is kind of like when I was, you know, just starting to kind of hang out with them. So I'm just like, okay, David's like asking for something. It seems pretty serious. He must really need me there. So I'm going to go and I'm going to, you know, instead of just going home, getting some rest, I'm going to stop by his apartment and then I'm going to go home. And I get into the room, David, he's a very convincing person. He was very calm and, and everything seemed normal. And he was just like, yeah, you know, like we just have this scene, you know, like I wanted to do, I want you to like make out with Corinna and um, you know, like, are you cool with that? And I was just like, yeah, no, I'm fine with making out with Corinna. Like, that's fine. I don't understand exactly what this bit's for, but I'm just trying to basically just get it over with so I can, you know, go home and get some rest. And then, um, you know, during the video, we kind of start the make out starts going and then it's going on for a, a decent period of time 
then after Jason pulls off his mask, and I realized that, you know, I just was touched by someone that, you know, I did not, you know, consent to having their their tongue. This was obviously horrible for a multiple of reasons, but what made it worse was when David posted the video regardless of how Seth felt about it. But it made it way, way worse when David and Jason tried to spin the situation into Seth stealing $50,000 from him during their podcast. Seth rebutted the statement with proof that David was lying during David's statement. After multiple people came onto the H3 podcast and called out David for the messed up stuff he's done in the past and their own experiences with him, David would finally respond but this time on his second channel and with a two minute video and a couple weeks later during this video he'd give a half-assed apology to seth and say that he missed the mark which is his favorite saying he'd also say that the people he doesn't associate with anymore disappointed him and that's the reason why they are no longer in videos and he wanted to distance himself from them but outside of dom how did these other members disappoint him anyways the video was short and horrible and uh once again glossed over any wrongdoing that david had done putting all the blame on other people besides seth but again doesn't say what he did wrong with Seth, like accusing him of stealing money. Just says, oh yeah, sorry, Seth. I didn't mean to say that. I really missed the mark. But never tells his fans what he did wrong when he, like, accusing Seth of stealing money. A bunch of TikToks, Vines, Instagram stories, tweets, the whole thing. Um, and I'm obsessed with what I do. I love being able to make people happy for a living. And that's all that I want to do. Um, that being said, consent is something that's super super important to me whether i'm shooting with a friend or shooting with a stranger i always make sure that whatever the video i'm putting out i have the approval from that person um, and i also acknowledge that there's times where a person can change their mind and they decide that they no longer want to be associated and no longer want to be in the video that I'm putting up and then I'll take the video down. And there's also been moments where I've looked back on videos and I realized that these don't represent me anymore and they're hurtful to other people and I don't, I don't want them up because I've, I've grown, you know, as a content creator and as a person and I don't agree with some of the videos I've posted. Um, with the Seth situation, I'm sorry to Seth because I, like I said, I, I just want to make videos where everybody in it, you know, whether you're participating or watching is enjoying and having a good time. And I missed the mark with that one. And I'm really sorry. I, I truly, truly am. Um, and with, with people in my life that I don't film with anymore, um, like Dom and, you know, the other people that I no longer film with, I, I chose to distance myself because I don't align with some of the actions and I don't, I don't stand for any kind of misconduct. And I, I'm, I was just, I've been really disappointed by some of my friends. And for that reason, I've separated from a lot of them. Um, I think with any video I make, my main purpose is to make people happy and, and inspire people. And I just, I never want anything to get in the way of that. And I'm sorry if I've let you down and things like that won't happen again. And I learned from my mistakes. Um, and I also believe that actions speak a lot louder than words. And, you know, you can take my word for it that I'm going to change, but I'll also show you. A couple of days after this video was released, a major Exposed article came out against David and Dirty Dom. This was the same article that I briefly mentioned before, where one of the girls who went to David's house was essayed by Dom, and a clip with Dom was included in that weekly vlog. This article prompted David to make an even longer video on his main channel. During this apology, he'd say sorry to the women who were essayed by Dom, but David also says that he didn't realize that he had an unfair power dynamic against his friends, which I believe is an incredibly huge lie. He asked for forgiveness, but once again failed to apologize to Seth, Big Nick, and Trisha, the people who had valid criticisms against David and were upset with David. Appropriately. I want to start this video off by saying I fully believe the woman who came out against Dom and said she was by him. Um, as it was reported, the next day I got consent to post the video. Even though I got the consent to post that video, I should have never posted it. And I, what, what I understand now, and I didn't understand before, is that she sent that text because she felt like she had to, not because she wanted to. And that's up. And I'm sorry. When she later reached out a couple months later to take the video down, I immediately took it down. And I want to apologize to her and her friends for ever putting them in an environment that I enabled 
that made them feel like their safety and values were compromised. I'm so sorry. I was completely disconnected from the fact that when people were invited to film videos with us, especially videos that relied on shock for views or whatever it was, that I was creating an unfair power dynamic. I did not know this before. It was completely wrong and I wish I was more responsible and I wish I was more aware at the time and, I, and I'm so sorry I missed that. I didn't know what was going on in that room and I should have been. I should have been there and I should have been making sure that everybody involved was was taken care of and wasn't uncomfortable. I for all the things David was called out for, a seven minute video didn't do justice and showed a side of David where he will dodge any blame that may come out against him in order to save face. After the allegations came out, a lot of his sponsors cut ties with him and he also stepped down with his role within his company. Now, a month after this apology video and allegations came out against David, Jeff Wittick posted a documentary onto his YouTube channel. This doc had a few episodes, and in the second episode, right at the end, Jeff adds in the part of the vlog which saw Jeff smash into an excavator. He'd say this for his narration at that part. Worst that could happen if I swing from a rope over a one foot deep lake. And yeah, I didn't know I was going to go that fast. So I grabbed the fucking rope and I tried to make a goddamn funny video for people. But this is where I made a mistake. I forgot that the biggest fucking idiot I know was driving it. Now Jeff showed off his injury a year prior on Instagram and kept it brief saying that he got injured but didn't blame anyone. But in the video, David does get out of hand with the equipment with Corinna Koff also saying that David takes things way too far. After this, things went pretty quiet on David's end, but Jeff would start to call out David for not reaching out to him with his surgery or how he was doing mentally. He'd publicly state multiple times that he didn't want anything to do with David Dobrik or be involved with anything he was doing anymore. And just like the other ex-members of the vlog squad, Jeff was also exiled. A year later, Jeff posted a video titled Dear David. During this podcast episode, Jeff addressed the reasons for why he finally unfollowed David from social media. Jeff stated that it was way more than just David not checking in on him with his surgeries. Jeff stated that the producer of the documentary showed a clip of what David had to say about the accident, and in this clip, David was blaming Jeff for the stunt and wanting to do it in the first place. The real reason I was mad, it's going to come out publicly in a month anyway, but David filmed the documentary and the producer of the documentary, creator of the documentary, director, whatever you want to call it, he called me, FaceTimed me to show me the clip of the interview when David addressed the situation with the crane. And he said that it was my fault. David blamed me for the, the crane. He insinuated that I was crazy. I always want to push it. And I'm the reason that this happened. When that's complete bullshit, there's 20 people on the beach that are witnesses. I have fucking six terabytes of footage of you asking me, begging me to go out there and do the thing again and that you would spin it slow. You just want to take me out there because it's more scenic and it looks better on camera. It's more cinematic. And just to hear him sit there and say that, I was like in shock at first because I'm looking at it over FaceTime and I just couldn't believe that he would say that. Not only does he not really give a fuck but imagine you smash somebody's skull in they take it on the chin they don't sue you they don't fucking press charges i i mean anything it could have it was i would nearly die i came an inch from death and an inch from going blind i'll have lifelong brain injuries and save them from fucking everything you would have got deported you would have got put in jail for manslaughter you could have got sued for everything i took it on the chin and then to see this and that just made me completely lose all respect for this guy this podcast episode came out in february of 2022 and a month later david and jason uploaded their podcast episode titled discussing what happened where david once again reiterates it was all jeff's idea but also said that it was the worst day of his life not realizing how bad that looks seeing that david was the one that was operating the crane and caused the accident in the first place for letting the crane spin way too fast at almost 60 miles per hour a day or two later jeff came out with his video titled discussing what really happened and and during this video, Jeff states that David has a tendency of making himself look like the victim or for people to feel pity towards him, which is what he was doing in that first video. Jeff also states that David lied about not knowing the date of Jeff's surgery and also how David and Jason make a claim that they tried to reach out and pay for his hospital bills. But Jeff claims that Ivan, his assistant, is the most efficient assistant and has never saw anything from them about paying for the hospital bills. So again, it was pretty much all a lie to make himself look better in front of his audience now yeah and then he wasn't in hawaii i guess he just wasn't funny so he didn't make the rest of the video but jeff's back 
He's back in. We're good. And everything's We're good, I guys. I heard him. That whole accident sweeping under the rug. I got him a Hawaii trip. No, bro. I had surgery planned that you can't just book these surgeries like haircuts. You have to book them months in advance. You guys are saying that you have tried well, to pay the hospital bills, right? But your his well, assistant hasn't well, reached back out. Well, bro, Ivan is the okay. most efficient assistant in the world. He used to work for uh, president of a major film studio. This guy is like, what the hell's going on? Nobody responds. He's on it every single day. He's the one who brought it to my attention that there's an infraction on my credit because they won't respond. I've been said, do we have to go to litigation with this insurance company? Natalie goes, oh, are you suing us now? If you fucking pay attention to the emails, Ivan's on it every single day. Jeff wanted to keep the accident to ourselves for a while. Um, I think he wasn't, he also just wasn't comfortable with like, the way that he looked, he didn't want to show people until, you know, he was ready. That's understandable. Right. And, and, I, and, I, and what bums me out is <clears throat> I see a lot of things. I don't know if he said it or where it was, like, put into the universe that, like, I kept this from people. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, for multiple reasons, I wouldn't keep that from people. One, it's because... It's, You're talking it's about it two years later it's for the life. first time. There was a documentary that came out. You didn't fucking even mention anything about it. After this, Jeff went on to sue David for $10 million, and the case is still ongoing as of today. David would also allegedly be sued by his insurance company as well. Now, there was a clip that recently came out where Jason is on a podcast and speaks about David and how he feels like sometimes David ignores his struggles. Like Jason told David that he was about to lose his house, so he had to go home and go on TikTok Live to make some money to pay some bills. And David replied to him by asking him if he wanted to go play pool. I like say to him, and I'm not sure if he hears me, like, I'll say things like, I'm losing my house. <laughs> and, and he'll be like, oh, but just come play pool. <laughs> there was a great TikTok that he sent, which was like some guy. I don't know if you saw it. He sent it to me. It's just like a TikTok. And it's just a guy on the phone. And it's, just, it's basically David. He's like, yeah. it's just the guy that has like a lot of money and, can't, and can do anything all day. He's like, oh, Dipple's having a party tonight? And, like, yeah. and it's literally yeah. like things that David has said. I mean, it's crazy. Because like, all at four. Yeah, I mean. He but if you think it. about it, though, from 18 to, like, what, 23, 24? Oh, he was hitting it he, he never, He never drank. I don't think he oh, ever drank. Yeah, never he did never anything. Been, no, no, no. And no, I just didn't. remembered he would, like, even when we would um, visit him, we'd be up to, like, midnight just, like, watching the edits. Just, like, hey, is this is this part better or this one's better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he would have everyone just crowd around his bed. I just remember that. I was like, that I was thought so that was fun. insane. Yeah, and and that and now it's like the complete opposite. Everyone's like working, and here's him just like, "Hey, what are you doing tonight?" And it's like a Tuesday night. Everyone's working. <laughs> you want to watch a movie? Yeah, <laughs> it's just a crazy switch, honestly. Mm. But I just, I mean, I just can't. I just, I mean, the guy, the guy worked hard, you know, for four he did, years. He did. You were there. Yep. I mean, you lived like eight lives, honestly, Jason. I know, and that that YouTuber time is so. Um... You do so much in such a little amount of time. Like I don't know, you're like doing so much. Yeah. Me meaning like in one day, you know, you're at a ranch shooting. You're at uh, freaking Madison Beer's apartment shooting. You know what I mean? You're just like, you just do so much in just a little amount of time. Yeah. I miss the I miss the podcast. I wish he. I miss the money of the podcast. <laughs> I see Jason say this on a TikTok clip like every other week. What do I do? He turned down ten million dollar deal. I see you say that on like TikTok clips oh, all the time. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. With you, well, that's that. like that's like that's like a joke for my act that I say, which is, you know, he turned down all this money and all he had to do was talk to me once a week for forty minutes. You know, like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and, and you, I'll tell you why it stings is because that's that's literally every comment on TikTok Live. When's the podcast coming back? So that's why it stings. Because it's like, if no one yeah. cared, I'd yeah. be like, oh, whatever. No, that was the best podcast ever. It was fun. Now, David is so far disconnected from reality and his friend's struggles that he doesn't see any need to help Jason with his financial struggles. Even when they were recording for the vlogs, Jason wasn't compensated fairly and sometimes was never compensated at all. During this podcast, Jason also says that David rejected a $10 million deal to do their own podcast and it really hurt Jason financially. As of today, David Dobrik has completely abandoned his main channel and podcast channel and mainly posts on Snapchat, where he allegedly makes $45,000 a day and almost $10 million a year, which is absolutely insane. 
Now, I know some people in the comments will say that David didn't fall off because he still makes a ton of money each year. And that's not really the issue. The issue I have is that he never apologized or took accountability for his actions and how he took advantage of his friends and even almost killed one of his friends. And instead, he'd constantly push the blame onto someone else and left his channel without an explanation. And he's still allowed to live a lavish life even after everything he did that was wrong. Remember, this was a guy that was extremely likable, but as the layers continue to be pulled back, we started to see David's true colors and how he would do absolutely anything to mask the damage he has done to his ex-friends. But how do you feel about David leaving YouTube without an explanation and the numerous controversies that came out against him two years ago? Let me know in the comments below. This has been the end of the video. If you have any creators or video ideas that you wanted me to talk about, the best way you can suggest them to me is through my Instagram DMs or on my Discord. Now, of course, I say this every single video, there are major updates to the Discord where you can earn bills coins to earn rolls within the server, which is pretty cool. So come check it out. We also talk there about many different things and also other uh, creators that I've spoken about in the past come onto that Discord too. So if you want to check it out, I'll leave a link to it in the description below. If you found yourself enjoying the video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out and we are extremely close to hitting 200,000 subscribers. So that would be awesome if you subscribe. And it also keeps you up to date with the newer uploads to the channel. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Now, it's been a while since I took the time to speak about a channel as childish and as bad as the one that we talk about today. Much like Pretty Boy Fredo, I actually forgot I'm not supposed to mention his name or else he'll try to sue me. So again, much like Fredo Boy Pretty, the creator that we speak about today is pretty horrible. King Sid is a content creator that we will be looking at.